Good afternoon. Our first item of business today is an Economy, Energy and Fair Work Committee debate on Motion 17360 in the name of Gordon Lindhurst on its business support inquiry. And I would encourage all members who wish to contribute to this debate to press their request to speak buttons as soon as possible. And I call on the convener, Gordon Lindhurst, to speak to and move the motion. Words, concepts, arguments. Are these not the tools of our trade, presiding officer? We speak, therefore we are. It was P.G. Woodhouse who said, and I quote, one of the drawbacks of life is that it contains moments when one is compelled to tell the truth. End quote. That is a caricature, of course, and yet... So I shall focus uh, in my speech on the content of COSLA's response to our report and try to overlook the grievous tone. The letter from the Scottish Government was, by contrast, a ray of sunshine. I shall focus on the tone and try to overlook the content, which, I'm sorry to say, was somewhat scant. There are four areas of the committee's report I wish to address. Transparency, accountability, alignment, and engagement, but perhaps some context first. Business Gateway was envisaged as a one-stop shop for business startup and support. The Scottish Government's flagship for small and medium-sized enterprise. And a decade has passed since the service transferred to local authority control. A perfect time to assess, perhaps, where we are and where we want to be. A chance also to follow up on a narrower piece of work by our predecessors, the Economy, Energy and Tourism Committee, who advised in 2011 that Business Gateway should be operating at peak effectiveness and suggested we might want to take a future look at the performance of business support services. The future being now. In fact, this could have been this committee's first inquiry in 2016 before what members of the House of Lords refer to as the other matter came along. Is there an election tomorrow? I will say nothing further on that point. So we began with an inquiry into the economic consequences of leaving the EU. But I digress. So the remit of this inquiry that we are concerned with today was to understand the range of support services available to new and existing SMEs at a local level with a particular focus on business gateway. To do that, we wanted to engage with businesses directly. We received 355 responses to an online survey, 41 submissions to a call for views. We visited companies in Lanarkshire, Inverness, and Aberdeen, as well as Edinburgh, and studied the Enterprise Ireland approach during a visit to Dublin. We took evidence from support providers, representative bodies, financial lenders, local government, and others. And we heard that the variety of support, advice, and products available to businesses is a strength. No wrong door being the phrase. But opportunities to align local and national economic priorities were missed. Business Gateway were not included in the Enterprise and Skills Review, although they have been involved since. We recommended a number of ways to improve transparency and accountability, including publication of regional budget and performance information. The inquiry also led us to look at how others provide business support. We found the approach in Ireland to be a mix of tailored local delivery and national strategic direction and recommended a review to see which aspects of that model could work in the Scottish context. So how was our report received? The Cabinet Secretary said he recognised, again a quote, many of the points you raise about business gateway do need to be addressed. He told us he and his COSLA counterpart agreed we can do things better and that they would work to co-produce solutions as part of a single system approach. So far, so encouraging. Although perhaps Mr. Um, I suppose uh, Mr. Hepburn could provide us with a few more clues today. 
particularly on the work with COSLA to improve transparency around performance, and also his own officials' review of the Irish model. The Scottish Government's response referenced Scotland can do several times. The committee heard very little about this initiative during the inquiry. Doubtless, again, we can hear elaboration later in the usual can-do manner. Now, we don't want to invoke the cynical rebuke of satire, but of course Jim Hacker's first rule of politics was never believe anything until it's officially denied. The committee was deeply concerned about the lack of transparency with Business Gateway. There's no regularly published information on local targets, performance, or budget allocation. Now, we were not looking for a league table approach, but to encourage more openness. COSLA rejected our findings, citing the availability of economic indicators and the benchmark framework, both of which we had considered during the inquiry and found wanting. The local government benchmarking framework includes only one element for business gateway and provides nothing on business gateway, only spend. The SLAED economic indicators report covers three strands, but none with enough detail to scrutinize performance. There's nothing on performance against targets. In fact, targets are not mentioned at all. And there's no reference to the budget allocated across different council areas. COSLA said they were, and again I quote, moving towards output and outcome based, sorry, moving towards output and outcome based measures of performance. Now that does sound encouraging, does it not? Only they didn't say how. We recommended an independent body monitor performance against targets. COSLA rejected this, defending their position on the basis of local democratic accountability, which is indeed an important point of principle, although in this context, I rather doubt it will satisfy FSB Scotland. Susan Love pointed out that Business Gateway is a national service, and inconsistency in delivery was for her the ultimate question. She asked, who do I speak to at COSLA? What will I do? What is the Scottish Government going to do? Is the local authority going to do something? The sanctions for failure to meet contract are completely unclear to me. So the expertise of bodies such as FSB and the Chambers of Commerce should not be overlooked. They would be well placed to provide feedback in the interests of continuous improvement. We called, as a committee, for the Business Gateway Stakeholder Group to be re-established to encourage collaboration and better alignment with other services. Confusingly, COSLA said consideration would be given to a form of public sector partners. They had previously told us they could see no advantage in a formal relationship at the national level. Now, presiding officer, I have no wish to be unduly negative. We all know the relationship between central and local government can be difficult, perilous even. There are sensitivities, there are balances to be struck. There are also times when an inadequate response is just that, and we should call it out. As an American Secretary of State once observed, a memorandum is written not to inform the reader, but to protect the writer. So let me be clear, there is a good story to be told with Business Gateway. Our report welcomed the monitoring of client satisfaction and the systematic way that this is being done. We also heard praise for online services, understanding of local needs and early stage support. We saw examples of innovation and best practice. And there is cause to be upbeat about how we birth, nurture, and grow businesses in Scotland. And we should celebrate those areas where the service is seeking to replace vanilla spaces with go-to places. There is also ample room for improvement, however. In the words of Bill Gates, your most unhappy customers are your greatest source of learning. 
We applaud local authorities for what Business Gateway does well, where they strive to be best in class. But COSLA cannot afford to be complacent. Scottish businesses cannot afford for COSLA to be complacent. And indeed, the Scottish Government, the Cabinet Secretary, and others cannot afford for COSLA to be complacent. Our report recommends where they can do better and balance local needs with the single system approach. Because to borrow from the Scottish Government's response, we want businesses to have the right support in the right place at the right time. And I move the motion in my name. Thank you very much. I now call on the Minister, Jamie Hepburn. Thank you very much, President Officer. Can I uh, begin by thanking the, the convener, the committee, and all those who took part in uh, their uh, inquiry and shared their views. Their uh, contributions have, uh, I believe, shaped uh, an insightful and uh, highly relevant report on the, the state of business support uh, in Scotland. And as uh, Mr. Lindhurst uh, set out in his opening remarks, uh, it comes 10 years after uh, the passage of business support through Business Gateway into the hands of local authorities. So an entirely appropriate juncture to look at these uh, matters. The findings of uh, the committee's report bear open and frank discussion. I am very pleased to have that opportunity this afternoon, along with uh, members from across uh, the chamber, to contribute to that discussion. Uh, supporting business effectively in Scotland is an absolute necessity. In particular, I am clear that small and medium-sized businesses are no more or less than the very bedrock of the Scottish economy. They make up the overwhelming majority of Scotland's business ba base. Their needs are in constant flux, changing either due to pressures from out with or within. Uh, in response to new conditions they find themselves operating in. It's crucial at the end that our system of business support adapts to these changes in kind, remaining responsive, appropriate and tailored to the needs of its users. This is essential in order for businesses to feel empowered to succeed and in order for our economy to flourish. Business Gateway delivers a, a tremendously important service throughout Scotland, but it simply cannot, as it operates today, be as responsive as businesses need it to be. I want to, do want to take a moment to revisit the successes of Business Gateway and then to build on that point. As Gordon Lindhurst rightly said, there is a good story to be told. It is uh, important to properly acknowledge and reflect on the, the real effective support that they do provide on a daily basis. Late last year, as part of Small Business Saturday, I was able to visit Indiglass, a contractor and distrib distributor of specialist glass products based in my own constituency in Cumbernauld. They provide architects, designers and construction companies with advanced industry knowledge, providing solutions to transfer light to the heart of buildings. With support from Business Gateway, they have delivered award-winning campuses for the uh, Glasgow School of Art and the City of Glasgow College and, and a range of other impressive uh, projects. And all of the finance and economy ministers have been able to see examples firsthand. For example, the, the Minister for Public Finance and the Digital Economy visited Adventures in Inverness. Adventures build camper vans for rent, allowing people to explore the Scottish Highlands and vehicles constructed from as many local sustainable products as possible in order to ensure as many new customers can reach their websites as possible. They sought help from Business Gateway and received one-to-one -one digital boost support. The Minister for Trade, Investment and Innovation visited BDAX, a family-run air conditioning and ventilation business. They operate throughout Scotland and have grown substantially over the past 15 years, winning a number of accolades and employing more than 20 people as well as being a living wage employer. They received support from Glasgow City Council to develop a growth plan and workplace innovations funding to support staff development. In March this year, the Cabinet Secretary for Finance, the Economy and Fair Work paid a visit to Elevator in Aberdeen, a business gateway deliverer who I know were also visited by members of the committee. Like those uh, committee members, the Cabinet Secretary saw evidence of the collaborations that put Elevator and Business Gateway at the heart of the local business ecosystem. These represent just some examples of the excellent outcomes business support can yield for many users. And it is in that sense right to acknowledge the, the diligence, commitment and expertise of the many Business Gateway staff across Scotland. But in acknowledging this, we must also acknowledge that things can be improved. This embodies the government's attitude towards improvement. It's right that good work is recognised and celebrated, and there are reasons to be proud of that work 
But we should never be so proud that opportunities to make things better are ignored. When we undertook the Enterprise and Skills Review in 2016, it was in the same basis. We acknowledged there are issues and wish to address them. In the same way, the committee's report raises a number of issues which we readily acknowledge. We're not here to debate whether or not business support could be improved. Instead, we are here to debate how it can be best improved. That spirit of collaboration is essential. We are to learn from this report and proceed in the right manner. I'm very pleased to say that we've already received supportive contributions and op opened up productive dialogue with a number of partners on this basis. I can't comment or respond for COSLA in respect of the committee convener's perspective in relation to their response, and I'm sure he will follow up with them. But we have engaged with COSLA. We have and always will engage with the Federation of Small Businesses and the Scottish Chambers of Commerce and its local uh, networks. FSB, for example, have been clear and consistent in raising issues around transparency and accountability. Like the committee, the government agrees that this is something we need to address in order for businesses to know where to go if things go wrong and to drive forward improvement. Throughout this ongoing process, we must not lose sight of the pivotal role of local government. It is critical that local authorities are, as those being close to many of the issues at hand in their area, remain key partners in this process. That collaborative approach is central to our existing policies on entrepreneurship and enterprise support, where it has already generated remarkable results. And in that regard, I want to take a few moments to talk about Scotland Can Do, mentioned by Gordon Lindhurst, and I say to him quite genuinely, if the committee wants more details, any more information on the Scotland Can Do initiative, we will always be happy to provide them. But Scotland Can Do does embody the principles of a collaborative approach. It's a platform developed with our public, private and third sector partners, which represents our shared ambition to become a world leading entrepreneurial nation. It emphasizes collaboration and champions an approach where sustainable growth and innovation go hand in hand uh, uh, with wider benefits to society. This ethos that positive outcomes occur where partners work from common principles towards common goals underpins our work. We are joined by a thriving community of partners who are committed to improving the resources available to their peers. We look to this community to help develop and implement policy and their energy and commitment has allowed us to deliver enormous collective impact. And it is paying off, make no mistake, since the introduction of Scotland Can Do in 2013, the effectiveness of Scotland's business support environment as measured by the Global Entrepreneurship Development Index has risen from 13th in the world to 5th ahead of all other parts of the UK. I fully believe we can bring this energy and goodwill to bear on the recommendations made by the committee. These developments speak to an attitude which I believe is shared by all of us in this chamber, by our partners as well. Identifying areas where improvements can be made does not mean laying blame at anybody's door. It is instead an opportunity to foster constructive, collaborative dialogue and explore together how the needs of Scotland's businesses can best be met. We, along with our agencies and wider partners, are already committed to the work necessary in making that happen. I hope this engagement can continue today within this chamber, that together we can exchange ideas on how best to improve business support. One of the very first steps is rightly this debate. I look forward to hearing contributions made to getting on together with the work at hand. Thank you very much, President Officer. Thank you very much. And I call on Dean Lockhart to open for the Conservative Party. Uh, thanks very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, let me uh, start by adding my thanks to the, the clerks and others for their hard work in preparing this very valuable report and also acknowledge the hard work of everyone involved in the Business Gateway Network. Three years ago, the Scottish Government embarked on its Enterprise and Skills Review with the objectives of delivering a more coherent enterprise support system, strategic alignment between the various enterprise bodies and delivering higher growth to the economy. Three years on and following the committee report into business support, it's difficult to avoid the conclusion that those objectives are not being met. Before I turn to the detailed recommendations set out in the report, it's important to remember the broader context of the Scottish Government's enterprise policy. In Scotland, we spend over £2 billion a year supporting enterprise and skills. Uh, that's around £100 more per head than the rest of the UK, but we still lag behind in many areas, including business formation and research and development, and the latest numbers show that economic growth in Scotland continues to trail behind 
the rest of the UK. And that's why this background highlights the importance of making sure we have an enterprise system, including Business Gateway, that is fit for purpose. Turning to the report itself, we heard evidence from a wide range of witnesses and stakeholders that there is a lot to commend uh, with the Business Gateway Network, and the Minister quite rightly highlighted a number of um, uh, successful examples. But uh, the report also highlights real concerns across a number of areas that Business Gateway is not delivering the support required by startup and SMEs across Scotland. The first concern highlighted by the report is the Scottish Government's cluttered approach to economic policy, which is holding back economic growth. According to Pamela Stevenson of the Scottish Local Authority's Economic Development Group, and I quote, we continue to be faced with clutter on a daily basis. She referred to the Scottish Government launching a number of new initiatives, none of which involved consultation with Business Gateway. This was echoed by Business Loans Scotland when they told the committee, we are not sure whether we are totally aware of what one another is doing. And that is certainly the case for the understanding by SMEs about what support is available. Other witnesses agreed. According to the Scottish Chamber of Commerce, finding the right route to business support can be frustrating for firms in need of support. The report also found a lack of alignment and accountability. In its submission, the FSB called for business support to be designed from the user's perspective to take into account the needs of business. But it also highlighted that duplication or failure to join up with other services makes this difficult to achieve. This was an issue identified by many other witnesses and it led the committee to conclude that the lack of clarity on the strategic alignment between Business Gateway and the other enterprise agencies is disappointing. Another problem identified by the committee was the lack of transparency which the convener outlined, um, in, especially in respect of Business Gateway budgets. To the committee's surprise, it's uh, not possible to determine how much money is being spent on Business Gateway services at a local government level. During much of the inquiry, in, instead, during much of the inquiry, we had to rely on budget information obtained by the Scottish Conservatives' uh, Freedom of Information request. Uh, this found that the Business Gateway budget has not increased in the last decade, and that there is a, a wide variance in spending across uh, different local governments. So the committee, based on this, rightly concluded that it was unacceptable that financial information on Business Gateway is not recorded and published in a consistent uh, manner across local authorities, and the committee recommended that budgets should be published annually in a consistent format to ensure full transparency. Strongly linked to transparency and accountability were challenges identified around target and performance measurement. Local, local authorities are responsible for setting their own targets. There is no reporting on what those targets are, performance against targets, or spend on uh, business ga gateway services. In response to the committee's survey, one uh, witness uh, noted that where there is poor performance, it's accepted and the targets simply get reduced. Not surprisingly, the committee also found this unacceptable. We looked at the uh, practice in Ireland and each local enterprise office there publishes local targets, uh, their priorities and spend and performance against target, uh, ensuring full transparency. And so the committee has called on the Scottish Government to examine whether this model can also be applied to Scotland. The final concern that I have time to highlight is the inconsistent quality of delivery of services across Scotland, with some businesses calling the delivery of service a postcode lottery. SCDI uh, expressed that, uh, concerns that evidence from their members suggests there is a very mixed bag in terms of the support they receive. This divergence can be seen in the limited data available, uh, showing that Elevator, which runs business accelerated services in Aberdeen and, and Dundee, deliver 25% of all the Business Gateway startups in, in Scotland. A presiding officer, Business Gateway was reformed by the SNP in 2008 to help support startup businesses across Scotland. This report clearly shows that the Scottish Government has neglected this vital part of the enterprise landscape over the past decade. While there are examples of good practice, and we should highlight and promote uh, those examples of good practice, Business Gateway under the SNP is not delivering the support required by SMEs in Scotland. And I must say the response the committee has received from the Cabinet Secretary in relation to its recommendations is disappointing. It shows a lack of understanding of how much reform is required in this area, and it shows that the government is not willing to properly engage uh, in this debate in how we can encourage and expand on Scotland's startup sector. 
Um, presiding officer, let me conclude by saying that Business Gateway needs reform. That's very clear from the Economy Committee report, and I look forward to hearing from the Minister in his closing remarks how this will be done. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call on Rudy Grant to open for the Labour Party. Um, thank you, presiding officer, and I welcome the committee report into Business Gateway. In order to grow our economy, we need to grow our own business. Homegrown businesses stay, they're rooted in Scotland, and are much less likely to move abroad, and that means that they pay their taxes here, they employ their workers here, and build local economies. We need an industrial strategy that puts indig indigenous business at its heart, helping people establish and grow their businesses. And many people have ideas about how, what they would want to create a business around. They know what they want to do, but they don't have the knowledge about business regulations or access to finance, and they need to be supported with that. Business Gateway was set up as a one-stop shop to signpost support. However, it doesn't appear from the committee report that that has integrated with other agencies. Indeed, Susan Love of the FSB told the committee I have not seen a commitment from other parts of the public sector to support Business Gateway as a gateway. Most agencies have been preoccupied with their own brands and programmes. The Scottish Government has not helped with that by funding a lot of additional programmes. And while new initiatives are always good for government to announce, it would appear from the report that they are causing problems rather than solving them. The committee pointed out that Business Gateway has not been included in the skill, Enterprise and Skills Review, and that is incredibly disappointing. If the very vehicle to facilitate entry into the Enterprise Support System is not included, how can those organisations be expected to work together? This was something the committee was critical of and recommended that Business Gateway be included in the review, and I believe they are right in that. Phase two of the review recommends a single access point for business assistance to ensure a more coherent and joined up system. It would appear that had the review included Business Gateway, it may have had a better idea of the business support landscape and would have considered what was needed to, what was needed to change in order to help the Gateway fulfill that role which they recognise is required. Presiding officer, there are around, around 100 employee-owned businesses in Scotland with a total turnover of £940 million. And this averages out at approximately £9.4 million per business. When you compare that with other businesses with at least five employees who have average around £5.66 5 million per business, it shows that employee-owned companies have a much greater turnover. Given that rate of return, the likelihood and the likelihood that most of it is re retained in our communities um, around those enterprises, surely we should be encouraging them. Now, the Scottish Government will point to the Cooperative Development Scotland and to the community, uh, community enterprise agencies, two bodies which would be able to help and assist. But you, if you cannot reach those bodies through Business Gateway, then they're not accessible where they are most needed. Yep. Jamie Hepburn. I very much concur with the point she's making uh, about employee-owned businesses. In that regard, would she welcome the fact that we've created an industry leadership group, which I'll be co-chairing, and which has set out an ambition to rapidly and greatly increase the number of employee-owned businesses. We already have a, an ahead average uh, ownership compared to the rest of the UK, but we want to go much further, and that's what we're going to do. Rudy Grant. Indeed, I welcome that, but it has to be accessible for people who would set up those employee-owned businesses, and one of the ways in doing that would be to make sure that Business Gateway was, was able to signpost them to the organisations that will help them do that. Small businesses are also critical to our economy, and again, they are rooted in our communities. And we recognise that they require additional support, for, for instance, a small business strategy to help them grow. They need access to the new Scottish in in National Investment Bank and they need access to government procurement. Currently, only around a fifth of Scotland's 12 billion procurement budget goes directly to small businesses, even though they account for 98% of the Scottish business community. 
Scottish Labour would break procurement contracts into smaller units so that it would be much easier for SMEs to bid for them. And we'd also tackle the culture of late payments, which are a huge problem to SMEs, and would require any company bidding for public sector work to ensure they paid their own suppliers within 30 days. Presiding officer, it would appear from the committee report that the landscape for support is cluttered, making it difficult for organisations to know who to contact. We've seen Highlands and Islands Enterprise and Scottish Enterprise narrowing the organisations and sectors they assist. The committee quoted the example of Bad Girl Bakery in Muirford, which had not received assistance from HIE to expand to Fort William because they were categorised as retail. When a business is able to expand and grow, then surely it qualifies for support. The committee report is a wake-up call to the government to create an integrated business support system which helps start up and growth of Scottish businesses and I hope the Scottish Government take heed. Thank you very much. And I call on Andy Whiteman to open for the Green Party. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Presiding Officer. And like other members of the committee, I'd like to thank the clerks and Spice uh, for all their assistance and everyone who gave evidence to the Economy Committee's inquiry into business support. Uh, as Gordon Linter said in his opening remarks, the inquiry focused on business support to SMEs at a local level, but with a particular focus uh, on the business gateway uh, service. And uh, I think it was a timely inquiry when we decided uh, to do it, given that it is a decade uh, since this service that was previously delivered by local enterprise companies uh, was transferred to uh, local uh, government. Um, and first of all, in the context of some of the remarks that have been made about our inquiry, I would like to commend all those who on a daily basis deliver uh, Business Gateway. Uh, I and uh, colleagues on the committee visited a number of businesses and a number of Business Gateway uh, offices across the country, uh, and we were generally impressed uh, with the level of service delivered by uh, advisors on the ground. Now, of course, there's always a danger. You do committee visits like that, uh, and you get to see all the good stuff. Um, but nevertheless, it was impressive to see uh, the range of work. And it was also during those visits we learned of the different approaches that different councils uh, take to that. And I'll come back to that uh, in, a, in a minute. And I, but I also do think it's important to stress that this inquiry was not an evaluation of the quality or content of Business Gateway Services per se, but an evaluation and an inquiry into the nature and structure of that service in the context of wider support for business. Now, on one reading, uh, this has got nothing to do with the Economy Committee. Uh, business Gateway is a local service. It's delivered by local government with local uh, government revenues. But it is legitimate for Parliament, I think, into, to inquire into how critical services like business support uh, are delivered. And we know that different authorities do it in different ways. We heard good reasons why Glasgow doesn't do uh, the same uh, as other authorities. But one of the reasons we wanted to look at this and discovered that it was important was because uh, in one of our key recommendations we found, we concluded that it is regrettable that there's been a drift away from the original intended purpose of Business Gateway. Um, now, Kozla explained why that's happened, but the point we were making was that this, is, this has happened without any strategic plan or review to inform that uh, uh, change. The policy intention of acting as an entry point for businesses has not been uh, fulfilled. Now, Kozla don't uh, agree with this, uh, and that's fair enough. Uh, and our findings, of course, are open uh, to challenge, uh, and the government's response, uh, as well as that of Kozla, provide uh, plenty uh, of that. Now, I welcome the broadly supportive tone of Minister's response uh, to the uh, committee, uh, though I think there continues to be confusion over whether and how the Enterprise and Skills Review engaged with this uh, topic. Rhoda Grant made some remarks to that effect uh, a moment ago. Now, in the uh, Cabinet Secretary's uh, letter uh, to the committee, he says that the uh, Enterprise and Skills Review did not explicitly involve Business Gateway, and that is a matter you note. He goes on to say that review was a discussion about improving national systems and as such would not have been the right forum to take account of the local nu nuances of the Business Gateway offering. Uh, and yet, in the government's response to Recommendation 52 about the drift away from the original rationale, ministers say, and I quote, the Enterprise and Skills Review concluded that the division of responsibilities between national agencies and local delivered business gateway was right. Now, I'm not sure how a review 
that explicitly did not look into local service delivery could have then concluded at the end that the division of responsibilities uh, was right. So I think there's quite a lot of fudging in retrospect about what the Enterprise and Skills Review uh, did uh, say. Cost as I say, did provide a robust challenge to some of the committee's findings, and this is welcome. Um, it has to be said, Dean Lockhart raised this, uh, that we were frustrated with the difficulties associated with collating, obtaining data on performance. Uh, and I think my dear colleague Jackie Bailey uh, is going to bring some light to bear um, on that particular concern uh, we have. Now, contrary to what COSLA assert in their response, we did not ever allege that local government is not accountable per se. What we did find was that from the information available to us, it wasn't clear how the service uh, could actually provide the kind of information that would allow that accountability uh, to take place. Um, not just to councillors and officials, but of course to the wider community um, who expect uh, a good service uh, from things like uh, Business Gateway. And likewise, we don't argue that Business Gateway should, should be subsumed into some wider national programme, but there should be better alignment. And that's why the Irish experience appears to us to be very instructive and why the visit to Dublin was such, of such keen interest, not only because it was my first trip to Ireland travelling on my new passport, um, and from where I travelled directly to the Court of Justice uh, to hear our Article 50 case. Um, but it also was in the co company of my dear friend uh, Jackie Bailey and Gordon MacDonald, uh, and we had a, a, a wonderful day uh, in Dublin. Now, Ireland is interesting because together with Finland and Denmark, it has been identified by the EU as three of the top performing countries for business support. And a service has evolved there that provides what appears to be a good integ integration of national programmes through Enterprise Ireland, with the work of local enterprise offices embedded with local councils, with service level agreements and funding agreed with Enterprise Ireland. And importantly, substantial discretion and freedom remains for local councils to, de to develop and pursue their own priorities. But a consistent framework of accountability and alignment appears to deliver itself a, a good uh, service. Now, I welcome the commitment by ministers and COSLA to take note uh, of the Irish experience. Presiding officer, Business Gateway is and should remain a local service providing locally based business support uh, to those uh, that need it. But I think our inquiry has demonstrated that there's quite a lot of work could be done to improve how that's delivered and particularly to make sure we have better integration with national services. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we now move to the open part of the debate. I call Angela Constance to be followed by Alexander Stewart. Angela Constance. Thank you very much, presiding officer. I think a good place to start is the cabinet secretary's response to the committee report when in correspondence, Derek Mackay said, the answer as to how we best support our business base does not come from one voice. It is through the breadth and diversity of opinion that we will ensure the right choices are made. And I believe that that is a mature reflection of where we're at. And I'm very sad to say that that mature reflection was somewhat lacking uh, in the COSLA response to the committee report. Now, I want to be absolutely crystal clear in stating uh, my fundamental belief in local democracy and local accountability. Uh, for example, uh, I really want to see the Local Governance Review herald a new relationship between local and national government and the communities that we seek to serve. And it's also fair to say that committee in calling out the risks of the withdrawal of European structural funds has actually stood up for local government and the local business support programmes. Uh, Brexit, whatever our views, has never been far from our thoughts. But the central point that members of the committee across the political divide coalesced around is that Business Gateway is a nationwide service that is delivered locally, uh, a good service, as the convener of the committee said, uh, but with ample room for improvement. And a number of specific recommendations were made around reviewing key performance indicators in collaboration with stakeholders and the business community, external monitoring of performance against targets, better publicly available local information on financial inputs and outcomes, transparency around budgets, etc., etc. None of which, in my view, is rocket science or particularly radical. 
Is it not, I suggest, the humdrum of the normality of everyday life? Yet we have seen a real resistance, sadly, from COSLA to much of this agenda. And COSLA persistently stated throughout the response that Business Gateway is a local service subject to scrutiny by democratically elected councillors who are accountable and have to operate within the standing orders of their own councils, which are audited annually and subject to best value. This is absolutely true, but it misses the bigger picture of a modern participative civic democracy, which rates high on transparency, is inclusive in its approach and is able to develop meaningful partnerships with communities of place and interest so services are shaped by the needs of users. In other words, accountability and scrutiny of one sphere of government will take place at many levels in many different ways. It does not come from one voice. And that brings me to diversity and the recognised wisdom that support more women, rural Scotland, people living with a disability, young people and those from our BME community into business is not just the right thing to do, but for the sake of our economy and to reduce the cost of inequality, it is also the smart thing to do. It is absolutely necessary. And therefore, statements such as Business Gateway is a universal service which is available to all does not, in my view, do enough in terms of recognising and removing the seen and unseen barriers faced by underrepresented groups. Again, lack of data was an issue and no solid overarching commitment to find the best ways to reach underrepresented groups to tap into all of our talents. And on that point, committee made a very specific and practical recommendation for a wider range of more tailored and targeted programmes. And again, COSLA's response uh, was somewhat uh, lacking, stating that with limited resources, the partners must focus their efforts on those businesses most likely to achieve a result. Now, this response is simply not good enough because in the context of this reply, it implied an inherent bias by omission against businesses from underrepresented groups. Uh, yes, briefly. Jamie Hepburn. Uh, again, I make the point I can't speak for COSLA, but just to underline uh, very clearly through a race equality action plan, through the commitments we've made through the Inter Women in Enterprise Action uh, Framework and the action group that I chair, we are very clearly determined to see significant and vast improvements in this area. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and I'm pleased to um, hear that the Minister once again put his uh, commitment on record and also to say that committee, uh, in fairness, heard some great evidence, uh, for example, from Glasgow about their very proactive uh, outreach to underrepresented groups, their tailored programmes for women, uh, their work with social enterprises and supporting employers uh, to recruit and retain people with disabilities. But there is uh, one area that I would uh, in particular like to press uh, the government benches further on, and that's the recommendation to create a national head of women in business to coordinate national policy and to work towards the establishment of a national women's centre for business. Now, the Cabinet Secretary's response uh, was that the Minister for Business was committed to developing, I quote, the concept of a women's business centre. Again, somewhat lacking in specific detail on the if, when and how, and to be frank, I found it a, a bit limp. So I would be really grateful um, if the minister, in his closing remarks, just could be a wee bit more rock and roll uh, and fill in some of the blanks, fill in some of the blanks for us. Um, or alternatively, he could just say, I, we're doing it, uh, and make a very clear commitment uh, to uh, the National Head of Women in Business, the creation of that post, and to uh, establish uh, a National Women's Centre uh, for Business. And at that, I shall uh, draw my remarks to a close, President Officer. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call Alexander Stewart to be followed by Jackie Bailey. Alexander Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I am very pleased to be able to take part in today's debate by the Economy, Energy and Fair Work Committee on supporting the business community and the business support. As someone who served on a local council for 18 years uh, in Perth and Canoas, I had the first-hand experience 
of how local authorities deal with business support services. And I must admit uh, to find the conclusions of this report all too unsurprising. The decision back in 2008 to pass the then still relatively new business gateway services to our local councils was and still is the right one. Whilst the vast majority of Scottish businesses employ fewer than 50 people, there are significant differences in our local economies across Scotland, particularly in our more rural areas, which require local flexibility and discretion to suit their needs. Having more localised services also ensures that there is a diversity across the understanding of the local economy, and that will give us the availability of ensuring that areas are supported. That is not to say that they should not have a high expectation nationally of what should be achieved at a local level. Unfortunately, the Scottish Government's current national economy strategy is, however, confused and muddled. The Fraser of Allender Institute has warned that the cluttered landscape of a myriad of different strategies, of different advisory groups and of different bodies has not achieved the Scottish Government's stated aim of a single economic strategy which all public sector initiatives would align behind. To be fair, the Scottish Government, 10 years after setting out uh, the approach, the Enterprise and Skill admitted that the current situation was entirely the opposite to their stated ambitions. The review failed to consider Business Gateway and the committee report described this as a missed opportunity. I would call that a glaring omission. In fact, the SNP's muddled approach to supporting the economy is particularly evident when it comes to Business Gateway, which, as the committee report has identified, has been seen to be unsuccessful in obtaining some of the entry levels that we would have seen across other sectors. At the very start, uh, it talked about trying to find and ensure that Scotland has its place. And yes, there are a number of good things taking place uh, within business communities, but they are not all singing from the same hymn sheet and they are not all getting the same support. While the business rate across the UK has expanded by 26% between 2010 and 2018, the same measure in Scotland is only 16%. The rate of Scottish business growth since 2016 has also slowed significantly to 1.6% relative to 45 for the rest of the United Kingdom. We are also slipping behind the rest of the UK when it comes to retail sales. While there is undoubtedly a factor to play, the lack of sufficient support provided to businesses by Business Gateway is certainly a factor. From my own experience in Perth and Canross, I can say that the Business Gateway, uh, there, was a, there was next to no scrutiny taking place within the organisation. And that is not how we should be running that sector. Pleasure. Andy Whiteman. The member just said he felt that there was a lack of scrutiny taking place in Perth and Kinross Council during his time there. Is that an omission of, of his own shortcomings? Alexander Stewart. Certainly not of my own shortcomings by any stretch of imagination. Uh, but there was certainly uh, 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 more transparency, more accountability needed to be doing on that. Uh, and I, I had the privilege of being, uh, for the last four years, the convener of scrutiny when we actually looked into some of those locations and found that there were, there were areas of lacking. Uh, uh, and I was quite happy to identify that when we had an SNP-led administration, when I was leader of the opposition. As the committee has reported and highlighted targets for local authority, there is now the opportunity for us to see where we can take that forward. And for the significant uh, opportunities that provide the local government both to spend and the importance of local economy, it's very important that we do that. The committee is absolutely right uh, to demand greater transparency uh, and greater uh, reporting aligning to the targets that have been set by the Scottish Government and also their economic plan. Local targets are nevertheless still key as to the different size uh, of complexities within business communities and the business community itself requires to have that. Local authorities should be required to publish information on targets and performance annually as suggested in the report. They should also be encouraged to better interact with the business support services and the business gateway within their own local areas. And, and also, local elected members have ownership of the strategic direction and also more information about the transparency and accountability taking place. 
I note from the committee report that discussion uh, talked about signposting and there was a lack of signposting by Business Gateway to the funding options for small and medium enterprise. This issue uh, about signposting is vitally important. Many of our small businesses, particularly in the rural areas, need small amounts of money to allow them to expand their business. That could be a specific bit of equipment or that could be a specific machine that's required. So micro credit situations are particularly attractive as much support can be given uh, in the forms of loans which tend to have a high payment rate and the money can be recycled in support of other businesses in the future. And now we see the Conservatives-led administration on Perth and Kinross has indicated and put forward two initiatives to ensure that funding small grants and the, and the support of small loans is now taking place and I very much welcome that new opportunity within Perth and Kinross. Other councils should be encouraged to take such local uh, initiatives and continue to support. So, in conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, we need to ensure that the business gateway services are more accountable and more transparent, both in terms of service and delivery. There have been success stories, but they have been too few. Targets must be set by local authorities tackling into and ensuring that the national guidelines are set. Elected councillors must take responsibility for setting the direction and the impl implementation of local business support services because by doing that, we will achieve much more and that's what business wants us to do. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you. A point of order from Andy Whiteman. Presiding officer, I'm sure Mr Stewart didn't mean the presiding officer any disrespect when he addressed you as the deputy presiding officer. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure that that's very helpful and I'm sure that no slight was intended. Uh, Jackie Bailey, to be followed by Gordon MacDonald. Jackie Bailey. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. As a member of the Economy Committee, let me start by thanking the clerks, Spice and all the witnesses for their assistance with this inquiry. A decade on from the transfer of responsibility from Scottish Enterprise to local authorities, it is right to consider Business Gateway and the support available for small businesses in our communities. It is a bit of a cluttered landscape, but at a local level, there is considerable support for the work of Business Gateway, and that is to be welcomed. There are, however, with any service, areas that require improvement. But you know, if sustainable economic growth is a key priority for the Scottish Government, and I would argue for the country as a whole, then we need to make sure that all actors are pulling in the same direction and there is signposting and collaboration across agencies. Because after all, we need to make sure that business opportunities in every part of the country are supported and developed. But it's not altogether clear that this is the case everywhere. Some business gateway services, as we've already heard, are second to none, very much exemplars in the field, but others are not at that same stage of development. As somebody who worked in local government, I am a believer in localism, but I don't like it when it's used as an excuse to defend unsatisfactory services and deny any need for improvement. Before turning to the responses from the Scottish Government and COSLA, I want to highlight two key recommendations from the committee. Firstly, we think there is much to offer from the governance structure and approach taken in Enterprise Ireland, never mind the good outcomes achieved. A national approach and policy framework giving a clear direction, but very much predicated on local delivery. That local delivery in Ireland is undertaken by local government but they share common standards and reporting frameworks, so there is consistency across the country. That said, there is also local variation and flexibility to take account of local economic circumstances. That, I would suggest, is a useful model to follow that respects different responsibilities, and I commend it to the Scottish Government. I also want to highlight a specific recommendation about a National Women's Centre for Business and echo many of the comments made by Angela Constance, because we received clear evidence that women-led businesses need specific tailored support. Women set up businesses differently from men. They capitalize them differently from men. We will have more success if we actually tailor our approach. And we know that if women started up businesses at the same rate as men, we would add seven billion to GDP. What's not to like about that? In, in one second, I'll get you to answer a question for me. So I believe we need a national head of women in business to coordinate policy and action and a national centre for women in business to drive forward good practice across all business support services. So let me ask the minister as he intervenes to answer this specific question. 
Angela Constance phrased it better than me. But will he be a bit more rock and roll? Will he today agree to that recommendation? There you go. Jimmy Hebburn. I'm always rock and roll. Um, <laughs> just, just, just to reassure, uh, I, I actually recognise the points that have been made uh, and the time had uh, allowed to have intervened on I was conscious to make the point, the Women in Enterprise Action Group, this has been a concerted matter of discussion. At our very next meeting, we will be discussing how we take forward the concept of establishment of uh, a women's business centre informed by research undertaken by Sarah Carter, a professor of entrepreneurship at the Hunter Centre at Strathclyde Business School. Jackie Bailey. I would take that as a yes. Let me turn to the Scottish Government's response, because it is a veritable blamange of warm words. And let me offer you an example of this. We will make progress without prejudice of a predetermined destination. In real language, that's we don't have a clue about the destination, but we will hurry towards it. I know the response is broadly positive, but it is little wonder that you can't really work out if the government are supporting individual recommendations or not. But let me turn to Cosler's response. Where to start with this? Let me associate myself with the remarks made by Andy Whiteman. But as I said, I used to work in local government, so I'm a fan. But this is one of the most negative and defensive responses I have ever seen. Instead of embracing the committee's recommendations as an opportunity for self-assessment to change and develop, Cosler has simply pulled up the drawbridge. They said we didn't understand what they did. Being insulting to the intelligence of the committee is a surefire way of winning friends and influencing people. But then Cosler might share some of the blame for this perception that we didn't understand them because the committee was supplied with limited evidence despite repeated requests. Let me share some of this with the Chamber. Parliament asked for information from the Business Gateway National Unit in Cosla on the 23rd of October. There was a discussion in Parliament on the 25th of October. Cosla were chased on the 2nd of November and we got a little bit of high level information back but not the range and detail of the information required. On the 21st of November, the committee took the unusual step of writing formally requesting the information because we'd run out of patience. Let me be clear, this was regional data about performance. It should be collected anyway. It is everyday stuff and shouldn't have been difficult to do. We were then told we could only have it if we kept it private, which is frankly ridiculous. This is basic monitoring data. Finally, in mid-December, just in time for Christmas, they agreed to make the information public. The majority of information that we requested on the 23rd of October remains, to this day, outstanding. That lack of transparency is a real problem. Growth is a national priority. We cannot have a situation where some of our, our agencies are pulling in different directions. It absolutely needs to be a joint effort, and Business Gateway need to be a critical part of that. That's why I think it was a missed opportunity not to have included Business Gateway in the review of enterprise and skills. But that said, I am glad they're at the table now, but there needs to be a recognition of the challenges ahead and a commitment to embrace change and improvement. Thank you. I call Gordon MacDonald to be followed by Brian Whittle. Gordon MacDonald. Thank you, Presiding Officer. In uh, examining the performance of Business Gateway, we should put it in context of the growth of new enterprises. Since 2007, the number of registered businesses in Scotland has increased by nearly 17%, and as of March 2018, there were 343,000 SMEs. Uh, the latest five-year survival rate of startups in Scotland at 44% is the same as the UK average. Part of that increase over the 11 years as a result of our university sector, Scotland's universities are empowering spin-off companies from the inventions and knowledge obtained from university research, and universities in Scotland are doing this far more than any other part of the UK. We found that Business Gateway plays a key role in growing the number of new businesses. The Federation of Small Businesses also recognised this and have said themselves that one of the strengths of the Scottish system is that startups have access to a wide range of business support, more so than elsewhere in the UK. The FSB agreed with the committee's findings that Business Gateway is a generally good national advisory service with high satisfaction rates. That said, they also highlighted that there are differences in quality around the country. 
This difference in quality is difficult to measure. As the committee found, there was a lack of transparency. There was no readily available published information on targets, performance against these targets, and budget allocations for business gateway at local authority level. The FSB stated in evidence, we believe significant improvements are required around governance, transparency, and scrutiny of the national service. On the question of transparency, this is in stark contrast to what committee members found when we visited Ireland. The Irish model is something we should consider if we want to improve our own approach in Scotland. In Ireland, targets and budgets are published regularly. To briefly outline the Irish setup, they have one overarching agency, Enterprise Ireland, which is the equivalent of Scottish Enterprise, and 10 county enterprise offices operated by councils which carry out Enterprise Ireland's work locally. Each local enterprise office has to publish local targets, priorities and spend. And these targets are agreed with and monitored by Enterprise Ireland. Each local enterprise office produces an annual local level report which provides a local economic baseline and transparent targets. And on top of that, the local enterprise office coordination unit run by Enterprise Ireland publishes an annual impact report which details key results and initiatives of each of the local enterprise offices. Enterprise Ireland meets with local authority managers regularly to monitor the work being undertaken locally and offer any support they can. A search online, I found the local enterprise development plan for the enterprise office in Donegal covering the period 2017 to 2020. The 60 page document profiles the county, what they want to achieve and how they intend to do that. There is a set of metrics that measure how well they are performing in creating jobs, number of startups, support for existing businesses, etc. Compare that to what the committee found in relation to Business Gateway, that there was only one published benchmark, the number of Business Gateway startups per 10,000 population. It would never give way? Yep. John Mason. Uh, I thank the member for giving way. Did he feel that uh, there was still enough local accountability and control within the Irish model? Gordon MacDonald. I'm sure if you wait about one minute, you'll hear my, my answer to that. So, <laughs> so, thanks, no, I've lost my place. Right. <laughs> um, I don't accept the causal response that reporting at the local level is a matter for each council. If we are to continue to encourage the establishment of new homegrown enterprises, then it should be a matter for all of us to ensure we have a consistency of good service for entrepreneurs and SMEs across the whole of Scotland. Presiding officer, in Ireland, their mix of local delivery, national strategic direction and national evaluation allows for local authorities to be held accountable. This is something the committee believes we are missing in Scotland. The Irish Government's Department for Business, Enterprise and Innovation told the committee that having centrally accountability has improved networking and sharing of best practice between local authorities. This is something we could benefit from across Scotland. And in answer to John Mason's question a minute ago, any further to this initial concerns in Ireland about the lack of autonomy and flexibility within this structure had not been the reality. One of the local enterprise offices told the committee that they had found that they had the flexibility to do things differently depending on their local needs. Presiding officer, it's clear that this government is committed to creating conditions where businesses are empowered to succeed and I was glad to see that Scottish government officials are already in contact with their counterparts in Enterprise Ireland. The approach taken in Ireland seems to offer a more holistic method and I look forward to how this can form future developments of our business support landscape in Scotland. But I'll leave the final word to the FSB who said, we welcome the Scottish Government's commitment to work with local government to make improvements to the service. Thank you very much. And I call Brian Whittle to be followed by Colin Beattie. Brian Whittle. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful uh, for the opportunity to speak in today's debate. And can I thank the Economy, Energy and Fair Works Committee uh, for the report. I think it was interesting reading the report specifically around how other business experiences had and how they had compared, compared with my own 
uh, when uh, seeking help for companies from organisations like Business Gateway and its predecessor, the local enterprise companies. Over a period of time, I had dealings with several different local business gateways and local enterprise companies, and I have to say, my experiences would reflect the submissions to the inquiry and its findings, mainly that it was a, a very mixed picture. I think it would be a very strangled route in, in finding the service uh, and potential funding stream that relates uh, to the issues a business may have in either start-up or expansion. I think given the very wide variety of potential businesses and business experience presenting to the business gateway, I recognise the disparity in responses, uh, with Business Gateway faring better with those at the basic beginner level than those already with business experience. Now, I have tried, uh, or did try on several occasions, to utilise uh, the services of Business Gateway, but found navigating the system quite frustrating. Although I found the advisors themselves uh, very willing and able, to me there was a lack of clarity around what it was they were supposed to be delivering. And I've never really gone past the first couple of meetings with uh, Business Gateway. I would say in my experience they don't move fast enough uh, to keep up with a business plan and very often, often businesses uh, can't wait uh, uh, the length of time required to work through uh, the business gateway process. I think the whole point of public bodies is to encourage uh, entrepreneurship and to ensure those with good business ideas get the very best opportunity to succeed and add to our economy. And given that the biggest proportion of businesses who do not make it will falter within the first five years, it is crucial that they get it as right as possible at the inception. I think the initial business plan uh, is important, but any business person will tell you the initial business plan rarely resembles the actual pathway a new business eventually travels. Therefore, any help and advice offered uh, needs to mirror this adaptability and flexibility. And I think this is what I feel uh, an area that Business Gateway and, and other agencies uh, need to consider uh, and improve upon. The advice and funding landscape is a cluttered one. Moreover, it can be confusing and frustrating, frustratingly slow moving with too many hoops to jump through for what I think can be quite basic advice uh, and progress. Progression onto Scottish Enterprise Business Support offerings is not always signposted and if you haven't travelled this path before, it can certainly delay uh, uh, business progress. I think there are some very good uh, uh, funding and advice avenues available, but signposting towards these is not often, um, often apparent, which I think is reflected in the committee's report. The aim, of course, is to encourage entrepreneurs, the risk takers, the job creators, the wealth creators to help feed a prosperous and sustainable economy in as wide uh, uh, sector diversity as possible. I think Scotland does have a fantastic legacy on the work stage that, that we should be very proud of. So we can uh, and have proven before to punch way above our weight. However, as recent statistics show and has been mentioned already, the level of new start businesses trails behind uh, the rest of the UK, despite the investment through the Business Gateway and Scottish Enterprise. And there are support networks out there. The trouble seems to be a lack of visibility of services, a lack of continuity between the offer from these services leading to confusion when seeking the most appropriate support. I note from the committee's report that they suggest that business support agencies need to be more integrated uh, and, and mean more lead to more partnership working. And I, and I would agree with this. Um, it's not just about initial support for a new start business. It should be about support for business growth through all of a business's evolution. And again, that pathway for me is not clear. How expansion is funded, support for marketing, innovation and technology are all available. Good advice is all available. But again, unless you know how to navigate the system, a business can miss out on that important support. I think it's also been noted today that the business support network has not been properly audited, and I think that has to change as well. In fact, the presenting office, I would say the whole system uh, has to be audited and streamlined and made more fit for purpose. When someone has that spark of an idea and the bravery to pursue it, they need to, be that, they need to have that encouragement. The pathway should allow them a resource that allows them to deliver from that spark right the way through to a global leader, leader if that is their ambition. I mean, the number of new start businesses registering is lower than the rest of the UK and that number reaching biz, big business status is also low. I think we can point to a Scottish economy heavily reliant on SMEs with, a few, with few big businesses. And I think Rhoda Grant mentioned this and I think where I would make a slight disagreement with it, I think one of the main stepping stones uh, uh, for an M M SME into a bigger uh, business is uh, capturing projects uh, in the public uh, procurement process. I think this is an area I think the Scottish Government definitely can do better. I think too many public projects end up uh, awarded to companies 
from out with these shores, not giving our companies the opportunity to, to, to d deliver them to a bigger company. So the journey of an entrepreneur is a difficult one, uh, presenting officer, usually taking several attempts and much personal risk and sacrifice along the way. It probably requires an injection of personal equity and loans against property. It'll probably mean you're the last person to be paid at the end of the month if indeed you do get paid. It will mean inordinately long hours. And after all that, if they do succeed and, uh, and, and, and they're still there after five years and reach a position where perhaps they can begin to reap rewards of their bravery and effort, we find the Scottish Government want to tax them higher than any other part of the UK. I think the system is not entrepreneur friendly and the system is not best designed for business growth. The truth presenting officer, rather than punish them for daring to be successful, we need to encourage them to, to take risk because to support our public services, we need to grow the tax base, uh, to develop a well-paid workforce, increasing that tax increase, uh, that tax take by developing the economy. We need to give them the very best start uh, and chance to succeed at, at that journey. Uh, the current support system, I think, is cluttered and clumsy. It needs to be reviewed and streamlined with clear, definitive objectives put in place. It is a hard enough road being a business owner, presenting officer. The least we can do is give them the best possible start. Thank you very much. And I call Colin Beattie before we move to closing speeches. Colin Beattie. Presenting officer, I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak in this debate on the Economy, Economy Energy and Fair Work Committee report and business support. And I take the opportunity to, make, to, to thank the clerks and all concerned in producing this report. Now, the key area scrutinised, of course, is business gateway. And business gateway is of huge importance to businesses in the earlier stages of development, and particularly in startup mode. And broadly, it was intended originally to be a one-stop shop to service clients. As time went on, this direct focus was diluted. The full scope of the committee's review is clearly too extensive to be adequately referenced in the few minutes I have. So I'll simply touch on some of those aspects which made the greatest impression on me. It's 10 years since the Scottish Government transferred responsibility and control of Business Gateway and local regeneration services to local authorities, albeit after a brief period where Scottish Enterprise administered that function. At the same time, local enterprise companies were abolished. In 2007, the Scottish Government stated it's appropriate that it should be delivered by local authorities with whom these businesses already interact on a range of local issues. And many positive aspects were uncovered. There's 57 business gateway offices across Scotland employing 356 people. And in the past 10 years, nearly 100,000 businesses started up with the creation of more than 108,000 jobs. These and other statistics seem impressive. However, it soon became clear that the picture across the country was rather patchy. Not all offices operated to the same standard, and indeed there was evidence of differing standards and results. There seems to be an opportunity to identify good practice and to seek to share this. However, there seems no clear mechanism for this to happen. Rural areas in particular seem to feel that they received a less effective service, and they believe that being distant from areas of high population disadvantaged them. Time and financial constraints limit opportunities for rural businesses to access support, which may be relatively geographically remote from them in cities and towns. Some people using the services felt that they were confusing and time-consuming to navigate. The partnership with Scottish Enterprise and other agencies seemed at times less close than should be the case in order to allow seamless service to businesses. There seems a need for better alignment between these bodies. And there was also evidence that some companies did not engage with Business Gateway due to frustration at the length of time it took to navigate through the online information. There appears to be a general impression that Business Gateway is a little divorced from the big picture due to its delivery through local authorities, and that perception also needs to be changed. Perhaps due to its highly localized model, there seems to be a lack of transparency and accountability within the Business Gateway Network. And I know that COSLA reject that position, but there seems to me clear evidence in support of that view. It's unclear how targets are set and how performance is measured. Some of those giving evidence felt that targets had stagnated, while others felt that if a target could not be met, then the target was simply reduced to accommodate lower performance. The appropriateness of some targets was questioned. Concern was expressed about local authorities working in isolation, simply choosing their own targets. And the committee's recommendation that Business Gateway's core targets should align with the strategic direction of the Scottish Government's national priorities and economic plan seems fairly obvious as a recommendation, and one which I would hope would be complied with. Some questions were raised as to how accountability worked across offices as well as at regional level. Even this seemed obscure. And however true or not that may be, 
the perceptions were presented as such and need to be addressed. Questions were also raised why it was not possible to ascertain how much was spent on Business Gateway in each of its 57 offices. How did the offices perform against budget? Little detailed information at the regional level of Business Gateway was available. SPICE estimates that approximately £15 million pounds are spent annually. And this does not seem a huge sum of money to deliver such a fundamental and key business support. Evidence indicated that some councils have reduced their budgets, while others have let them stagnate. The lack of ring fencing of funding seems to be driving service inconsistencies across the regions. And yet, with all its apparent shortcomings, British Business Gateway does deliver for many up-and-coming businesses, and many more good stories have emerged than bad ones. And I do welcome the response of the Scottish Government, which appears to offer a positive way forward, and one which may well address the issues rightly raised in the committee report. So yes, Business Gateway does offer a service used, valued and appreciated by many. 50,000 existing or new businesses are supported every year. 700,000 people visited their website and read 2.7 million pages. And encouragingly, almost half the new startups were led by women. This is all continuing good news for Business Gateway. But perhaps the Business Gateway's role needs to be better defined. This would assist this important service to fill perceived gaps in the support landscape. It is important that the role of stakeholders and partners offering support services does not duplicate the work done by others. And we were consistently told by witnesses that the support landscape was cluttered, which resulted in confusion and a difficulty in identifying which agency a client should approach. And there is some evidence to suggest that some clients simply gave up. These various agencies should not see themselves as competitors, but as collaborators in delivering a seamless service to their end users. And it's natural that agencies should be a little preoccupied with promoting and servicing their own brands and products, but not at the expense of their clients. So perhaps a, a more formal arrangement is needed to drive this home. Hopefully this committee report will trigger work on better access to information for new and existing businesses. The Enterprise and Skills Review highlighted the need for a single digital access point to address concerns about businesses being passed back and forth between agencies. And I believe that Business Gateway will benefit from this, as will other agencies and, most importantly, users of the service. The importance of getting this right cannot be overemphasized. Within their mandate, Business Gateway should be at the heart of supporting new business as well as being a preferred partner in business expansion. And clearly the concerns are mostly around Business Gateway's structural issues and consistency of service, which should be relatively straightforward to rectify with some effort from stakeholders. It's right that Business Gateway should be nuanced to take into account local priorities, but it's also essential that it should take into account our national priorities and policies. It also must demonstrate value for money. Further, it must measure its performance against acceptable standard key performance indicators, and it has to become more transparent and more clearly accountable. I believe that the committee report draws out these important points, and I'm pleased that the Scottish Government has responded so positively. I commend the committee report. Thank you very much. And we now move to the closing speeches. I call Alec Rowley to be followed by Jimmy Halker Johnson. Alec Rowley. Thank you, President Officer. In closing for Labour today, I would like to uh, commend the work of the Economy, Energy and Fair Work Committee in producing this very thorough report into business support in Scotland. Gratitude should also be given to the various stakeholders that help contribute to the report and the businesses themselves that help provide a valuable insight into the reality of seeking business support in Scotland on the front line. There also there seems to be agreement in the, the Chamber today that the response from COSLA perhaps leaves more questions uh, than, 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 than answers. Uh, but it's crucial that we do get joined up working at every level of government and hopefully the, perhaps the committee convener and deputy convener can follow up with COSLA and iron out any difficulties that they've perceived. Uh, I also think that there is another thing that we can agree on across the chamber today, and that is that support for startups and local businesses and entrepreneurs uh, across the country should be welcomed, encouraged, and strengthened. And there seems to be an agreement in the chamber and from the government that in these areas we can do better. So again, taking that to the next stage, uh, 
demonstrates why the committee report is important. The vast majority of businesses in Scotland are sole traders, making up 69% of the business base, with a further 30% of businesses being classed as small, employing between 1 and 49 people. These businesses contribute vastly to our communities, with many of them being the lifeblood for our high streets at a time when high streets across the UK are struggling. We should be doing all we can to ensure businesses such as these have clear access to whatever support is available to ensure their businesses can flourish, help and employ people in their communities and reverse the decline of our high streets. What is very clear from the committee report is that while there is a lot to be celebrated in the current Scottish landscape for business support, there is a huge gap in the form of joined up government of the various support services on offer. The committee report makes it clear that signposting and coordination between multiple stakeholders and their partners remains an ongoing challenge. It is noted in the report that when the committee scrutinised to a 2018-2019 draft budget, it found gaps in business support, despite a cluttered landscape of programmes and services. So this needs to be addressed. In 2008, when the Scottish Government transferred Business Gateway and local regeneration activities to Scotland's local authorities, the intention was to steer businesses through the multitude of programmes and services that were available, such as the enterprise agencies, city deals, private sector programmes, growth deals and other regional partnerships. However, it has been noted that now, even 10 years later, signposting and coordination between multiple stakeholders and partners remains an ongoing challenge. Indeed, the committee report notes the policy intention for Business Gateway to act as an entry point for businesses seeking business support has not been fulfilled. In their written submission to the committee, COSLA highlighted the uneasy mix of national and local priorities. So we need to look at that. The enterprise agencies are gatekeepers to the additional support available in the growth pipeline and account management. But the national priorities placed on them by the national government do not necessarily fit with those relevant to local government, which is a greater focus on local priorities. So we need to work to get together because what this paints is a picture that is recognisable to many working within and alongside local government, a lack of joined up approach between the Holyrood government and local government. So there's more that can be done there. We can do better. Whether this is in-house building strategies, planning, or in the case we're talking about, business support, we need more joined up. There clearly needs to be a rethink in the way that we interact between local and national government, how that's communicated and how that's planned. So hopefully those discussions can, can, can lead from this report. The Scottish Government's failure to work closer with local authorities to review set targets and appropriately fund Business Gateway has resulted in the business landscape becoming cluttered, misaligned and confusing for businesses to navigate within. Only £15 million of Scottish Government funding is spent annually on delivering business gateway services, not nearly enough to promote in the Scottish economy at the local level. Over decades of austerity has also meant local authorities are struggling to deliver essential services. So we need to address the funding crisis that local authorities place themselves in, but most of all, presiding officer, we can do better in growing our economy and supporting business start-ups and business growth. Thank you. Jamie Halcrow Johnson, around seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I place on record my thanks to the uh, excellent clerking team um, who supported the committee's work throughout this inquiry. Uh, our convener, Gordon Lindhurst, uh, has already eloquently set out many of the main themes that the inquiry covered, 
and our conclusions. And following the Enterprise and Skills Review and the uh, current Scottish National Investment Bank bill that will require close cooperation with the enterprise bodies, our inquiry has been a timely one. Small and medium businesses are the backbone of the economies of regions like mine in the Highlands and Islands, and particularly in its most rural and remote parts. Access to services like Business Gateway are vital to help support local businesses, both those which are already established, but also in nurturing the vast pool of untapped entrepreneurial talent across the region. For many, Business Gateway is the first port of call for business support. Yet the committee's report finds inconsistencies in Business Gateway's coordination with existing agencies. The cluttered landscape referred to by the Fraser of Allen Institute and many members today. During the committee's evidence stage, I raised questions on the co uh, cohesion and collaboration between Business Gateway and those other key partners in local economic development, such as Highlands and Islands Enterprise. In many ways, Highlands and Islands, uh, the Highlands and Islands' distinct geography and business environment is reflected by those institutions that support businesses locally. And it is not long since this parliament had to fight off the threat of having High's board folded into the Scottish Government's strategic board, losing its own identity and oversight. And this inquiry um, has also been an opportunity to meet with a range of business support services in different parts of the, uh, the country. Alongside other members of the committee, I visited Business Gateway, High and four SMEs in the Highlands as part of the evidence gathering process. Ease of access to financial support was an ongoing problem for some of these businesses, as the report noted. I met with services in Orkney and in Shetland, and the divergences and discrepancies are stark. For example, both in Orkney and Shetland, the services co-locate uh, co with Highlands and Islands Enterprise. In the Highlands, it does not. The committee's, the committee's business support survey set in its summary that, in general, too many agencies involved and, and, and the business support landscape is confused. And the Scottish Government's own 2017 Enterprise and Skills Review recommended they streamline services. So the question has to be asked, why has the co-allocation of services and the integration of CMR systems not been made a priority? More can and should be done to improve agency-to-agency -agency referral and to recognise that it is all too easy for rural firms to suffer from passive officialdom. A proactive approach is the best, uh, the best way forward and an appreciation of the challenges, particularly in productivity, that we have to address. In their written response to the report, the Scottish Government has said the Enterprise and Skills Review concluded that the division of responsibilities between national agencies and locally delivered business gateway was right. But given the lack of coordination in some areas and the different approaches adopted across Scotland, this is a difficult position to hold. It seems that there is no real clarity as to where these responsibilities do or ought to lie. I'd also like to briefly touch on equalities. The committee report asks, uh, report asks the Scottish Government and its agencies to review the funding streams available to new and existing female entrepreneurs. We know that economic uh, growth simply will not reach its maximum potential until more women are su supported to start businesses. Women's Enterprise Scotland published research which showed that our economy would be boosted by billions if the number of female-led businesses matched those of men. Now, uh, Angela Constance and Jackie Bailey called on the minister to be more rock and roll. I think they hoped that he would be more Mick Jagger, but probably we'll have to settle for Mick Hucknall at this stage. But, <laughs> and I'm sure the minister will take that as he wishes. Um, but I do welcome the commitments that the Scottish Government uh, made in their written uh, response, particularly to encourage entrepreneurship in underrepresented groups and to work towards a National Centre for, Women, for uh, Women's Centre for Business. It will be an area where I'm sure all members of the committee will be keen to monitor progress in the coming months and years. Uh, there have been a number of positive contributions from around the chamber today. My colleague Dean Lockhart identified the key failings of the Enterprise and Skills Review and other aspects of Scottish Government policy in reducing the cluttered landscape and business support. He also highlighted, as others did, the real lack of accountability and measurable performance, which inevitably can lead to inconsistent delivery and a lack of real impact in many of the government's economic priorities. Alexander uh, Stewart highlighted his experience as 18 years as a councillor, but also, the, the, again, the lack of transparency and account, uh, accountability. Uh, and also the needs of rural communities and the particular needs of rural businesses, something that Colin Beattie also mentioned. Uh, Brian Whittle spoke again using his own experiences of engaging with Business Gateway and the frustrations of others he's spoken with uh, about the responsiveness of the service and the administrative burden of seeking support. Entrepreneurship is a fast-paced uh, fast, fast world 
And it's important that this, uh, the support is offered moves at a similar pace. Uh, other contributions from Rhoda Grant, uh, I mentioned the Bad Girl Bakery, which myself and a number of the committee coll colleagues uh, very much enjoyed our visit to. But she also talked about late payments, which is a, a real issue for many SMEs. Andy Whiteman highlighted the uh, Irish model and the importance of local services and their integration with the national strategy. And it, again, that was an area that Gordon MacDonald covered too. Angela Constance uh, expressed disappointment, as others did with the COSLA response, and she's certainly not alone amongst committee members uh, in that. And Jackie Bailey highlighted the need for uh, Business Gateway to provide a good service uh, across the country and not just in one or two areas. Presiding officer, there is much in the work of uh, enterprise bodies, both at national and local level, that is to be commended. I've met with many dedicated members of staff in services like Highlands and Islands Enterprise and Local Business Gateway. People who have shown great commitment to driving forward our local economies and supporting those local businesses that need it. But the committee's findings of clear structural flaws, which cannot be, uh, cannot be ignored by the government or by COSLA. Practical national solutions with a local reach must be found, with the emphasis on cohesion, decluttering, and developing a national strategy that ensures Business Gateway has a clearer remit. One thing is crystal clear is that there is not a shortage of potential growth and talent in Scotland. The challenge to the Scottish Government is to seize that opportunity and deliver for Scotland's economy. Thank you. I call Ivan McKee for around seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you, presiding officer, and uh, I'd like to thank all the members that took part in today's uh, debate, a very uh, fruitful exchange of ideas on how best we can uh, support our uh, wonderful businesses across Scotland. I'd also like to thank the committee uh, for the work that they've done and uh, the clerks for supporting them in that. The committee's report gives us much food for thought as we look to deliver the right type of support for businesses in Scotland. Um, at the first point, the committee saw that not including Business Gateway as part of the Enterprise and Skills Review was a potential missed opportunity, um, but while Business Gateway was not explicitly mentioned in the review, they've already been heavily involved in the work to create the new operating model for a single system approach, and we very much, as the government, recognise the crucial role of Business Gateway in the business support system. And Councillor Stephen Heddle and the leadership team at COSLA are committed to working closely with the Scottish Government and wider partners uh, to ensure that Business Gateway uh, is part of a single system approach which is responsive to the evolving needs of our business base. And I take on board the point that Alec Rowley uh, mentioned around alignment, and that is very much part of those, uh, those discussions between ourselves and COSLA going forward. And we both see the committee's report as an opportunity. Um, as part of a learning curve, it sets us the challenges of developing a robust co-produced solutions involving wider stakeholders and where there is clearer accountability and transparency. It's a challenge we readily accept and we're already taking steps to act upon it. We're working with COSLA and others to address structural concerns raised by the report reinforcing the clear role Business Gateway has within the wider support system and clarifying responsibilities. We cannot have a situation where our business base isn't sure about where, when it should go to Business Gateway. Um, that work will involve uh, closely working with the Federation of Small Businesses and the Scottish Chamber of Commerce and making it clear where within local authorities accountability lies for the performance. A single portal uh, initiative that we are taking forward, uh, working uh, to identify all of the services available to businesses um, is, uh, is very much central to that activity and will include everything that's happening across Business Gateway and all government agencies. That's a point mentioned by Colin Beattie and, uh, and others. The committee also highlighted the uh, support system in Ireland and elsewhere and how it goes about achieving national strategic alignment, accountability and local delivery. That system evolving from a similar situation to that uh, that exists in Scotland at the moment. So we think it's wise to take a closer look at the structure of enterprise support in Ireland and the other best practice examples globally to see what lessons we can learn, using them to inform our work on what's best for our business base and the unique makeup of, uh, in one second, 
the unique makeup of our ecosystem approach for enterprise support in Scotland. These points raised by Gordon MacDonald, Andy Whiteman and others. But it is important to recognise that we cannot just cut and paste the solution in Ireland that is tailored for Irish businesses and Scotland will have specific needs. And for example, some Irish services are fee based and that may not be something that we would obviously want to do uh, in Scotland. I take the, the member's intervention. Dean Lockhart. Uh, thanks very much, Minister. I would like to ask why has it taken a critical report from the Economy Committee to force the government to address this issue when it has been clear for years Business Gateway has not been functioning as it should? Ivan McKee. Well, I thank the committee for, for bringing forward the issues, and it's not clear to say that it hasn't been functioning. It has been functioning, and many great examples have hi been highlighted about, uh, by many members across the chamber, committee members and others, about the great work that Business Gateway has done. Um, the committee report, and we thank for it, the committee for it, has highlighted some areas that do need to be addressed, where there's patchy performance and some of the framework needs to be, needs to be looked at. And as I said, we are very clear about taking that forward with COSLA to address, uh, address those issues. We are also working together on how best to measure the performance of Business Gateway and how we assess whether or not we are providing value for the business base. This means co-developing solutions which create greater transparency over how money is spent and addressing concerns about the consistency of service across different local authorities, ensuring stakeholders such as FSB and Scottish Chambers play a regular and active role in developing solutions continue to develop a stronger team approach within the wider business support system and building on the work of Scotland can do um, and a, creating a situation where service users do not feel they've been pressed past from one organisation to another but feel they've been dealt with by one single system. And the work of Scotland can do was raised by some contribution uh, in the chamber today and it's important to recognise that Scotland can do taken forward by the private sector and entrepreneurial Scotland is very much a framework within which we have for example Scottish Edge which is bringing forward uh, many businesses through the, the support, the £13 million they've invested in those businesses, leveraging over £100 million additional pounds of, of, of investment. So they can do fest, uh, venture fest, uh, and the work, for example, of women in enterprise and youth enterprise. So a whole range of uh, support activities driving an e uh, uh, entrepreneurial culture within the Scottish innovation eco ecosystem. All of that together is work to lift Scotland from the, the 13th uh, most supportive economy globally to the fifth in the world ahead of all other parts of the UK, a testament to the work of those involved in the Scotland Can Do, Can Do movement. Another area we're working together on is mainstreaming best practice and further continual professional development, building on the good work Business Gateway is already doing and using constructive feedback to drive improvement. Can I just check on time? Are you pressed for time? Uh, can I can have one give or you two extra minutes? Time, Thank Minister. you very much, presiding officer. Uh, the committee also uh, rightly raised the issue of engagement with women and underrepresented groups and we're also looking at how business support system can be more effective in this area. Building on our work to help women, uh, more women start businesses through the Women in Enterprise Action Framework where the collective impact approach of the Can Do has helped to increase the proportion of women actively starting businesses, reducing the gender gap in this area at a time when it's increased in the rest of the UK and Scotland's performance here is now on a par with the best in the world, uh, for example, the US and, uh, and Canada. Um, points raised uh, very eloquently by uh, Angela Constance and uh, Jackie Bailey, and Jackie Bailey will be aware um, of my interest in this area through my former membership of the Cross Party Group on Women in Enterprise. Uh, Angela Constance asked for more uh, rock and roll. I'm not going to um, do that uh, this afternoon, but I'm sure there will be opportunities in the not near future where uh, that may well that may well happen. Uh, watch this space. Um, oh. In terms of the uh, uh, the request for the national head of women and enterprise, I know that's something. Indeed, indeed, I will. Angela Constance. Um, thank you very much, uh, President Officer. Uh, Minister, given that you've promised some uh, further action in future. I wonder if you could give us a wee bit more detail uh, about the how and when uh, we can make some substantive progress towards establishing the National Women's Centre for Business uh, and uh, the, 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 head, the, the head of policy role as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I promised rock and roll. I didn't pr 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 uh, promise specific actions on, uh, on, on these measures. But seriously, though, um, no, seri no I'm, ser I'm serious, seriously. Seriously, though, um, I take very much on board those points, and uh, I think it's my, my colleague, um, 
Mr Hepburn's already mentioned that this is uh, one of the items for discussion on the next meeting of the Women in Enterprise uh, group that he, uh, he chairs. And it's also worth uh, raising and uh, mentioning another point that uh, Dr Noreen Arshed of Dundee University has now been appointed as an independent advisor to the Minister on increasing uh, women entrepreneurship um, across Scotland. And uh, the Minister, Mr Hepburn, will be taking forward an evidence-based approach to identify the best, uh, the best concrete steps we can do to deliver, to deliver in this area and rest assured the government is very, uh, very serious about making further improvements to deliver uh, in that area. Um, and it's also worth, uh, of course, to mention that the other point raised by the committee around about um, our desire, I can, I, I can stress, to make similar progress in helping our minority ethnic and uh, migrant entrepreneurs um, realise their full potential at an area that was highlighted in the recent uh, FSB report, the huge potential that exists in that area. Uh, we're working with, uh, with Business Gateway and COISLA and taking forward research geared towards helping those groups, those groups make full use of the public uh, business support available. Turning to the issue of uh, funding, we are working with uh, COISLA and partners to assess if Business Gateway can do more to make small businesses aware of the various funding options that are available and that the options put forward are relevant and that businesses get the right support to put them in the best position to secure that funding. Uh, Rhoda Grant and uh, Brian Whittle mentioned, uh, raised the issue of, uh, of, of public contracts and procurement. And I can uh, let you know that over the last year, um, the, the, the number of um, businesses, uh, the Scottish SMEs that won, uh, sorry, 59%, fully 59% of public contracts were won by Scottish SMEs. And there's now 11 and a half, um, yeah, indeed, now, this will have to be a, a quick intervention and then a wind up, please, Brian Whittle. I think what I would be interested in is, is, is the value against the, the total value that's, that's awarded uh, from a public procurement perspective. Ivan McKee. I don't have that data to hand, but we will get back to you. But that certainly is also increasing in 11,500 businesses now working with the supplier development programme up 17% on the previous year. So this is an area we recognise, but it's an area we are making, making good progress, uh, we believe, on. Um, and uh, Dean Lockhart mentioned one or two uh, pointers on the economy. It's worth taking uh, this opportunity to remind in the last quarter of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of uh, 2018, we have data for the Scottish economy grew faster than the UK economy. Unemployment in the, let me finish. No, the Unemployment, winding up. unemployment in, the, in Scotland now at 3.2%, a record low, significantly low, lower than that across uh, the UK and has been for a specific period of time. Now, youth unemployment in Scotland significantly lower than the rest of the UK for a number of years now, and productivity growth in Scotland um, up significantly more over the last year than come that across close, the rest please, of the UK. Scotland's economy is delivering. We had recognised there are uh, room for improvement. We thank the committee for their report in this area and we will work with COSLA closely to take on board those, uh, th those recommendations and move forward to make Scotland's economy even stronger and deliver for our small business community. Thank you very much. Call on John Mason to wind up for the committee. Uh, around eight minutes, please, Mr Mason. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. And uh, there's clearly been a lot of uh, positive things said uh, in this debate, and I'll start with them, some of the positive things said about Business Gateway. Um, the convener, Gordon Linter, said that it's a good service. Dean Lockhart said there was a lot to commend. Uh, Jackie Bailey said that some business gateway services are second to none. Uh, Colin Beattie said, uh, listed the number of tr interactions there have been, and especially the positive fact that there's more women now uh, interacting than before. Uh, Jamie Halker Johnson gave a specific example of one of the visits we made uh, to the Bad Girl Bakery, and their cakes, I seem to remember, were very good. Uh, we did decide not to have a photograph uh, of me standing under a sign that said bad girl uh, bakery. Um, to move on specifically though to some of the issues that have been raised uh, and specifically the COSLA response which has been touched on by a number of speakers so far and I think as others have said and Jackie Bailey specifically said uh, we have had quite a strong response from COSLA. Now I was a councillor for 10 years and I am very enthusiastic and want to be very supportive of local decision making. However, there's clearly a balance to be struck here between what is a national service, namely Business Gateway, and the fact that it is locally controlled. Now that balance applies in other sectors too, for example, in education and schools. It, but it does strike me that the variation among schools is much less than the apparently huge variation across Scotland in relation to the Business Gateway model. 
Is that a bad thing? Not necessarily, but it does make it very difficult for the committee and anyone else who's wanting to look at it to even try to make comparisons around the country between, say, what's happening in Lanarkshire, what's happening in Aberdeen, what's happening in Inverness, and what's happening in Glasgow. And that has been reflected in our report, and it did lead to quite a strong response, uh, as we know, from COSLA. I mean, I do very much welcome Ivan McKee, the Minister's statement that he is working uh, with COSLA on all of these issues, uh, and we look forward to seeing where that goes. But as Jackie Bailey said, COSLA could have been a bit more forthcoming, and that might have better informed our report. And I was interested in Alec Rowley's suggestion that uh, I think the convener and myself uh, could meet uh, with COSLA or COSLA representatives and discuss some of these issues. Uh, and I would have to say that I personally would be open to that, uh, although I cannot speak uh, for the convener himself. Uh, moving on to a few other uh, points uh, that were made in the committee report, uh, Business Gateway not being an entry point for all business support. And I think a number of speakers again have referred to that. The fact that the Enterprise and Skills Review did not include Business Gateway, which did seem a bit strange to us, although I know that there are uh, reasons for that, and the lack of clarity on strategic alignment. I think I'm hopeful that the strategic board, which is still relatively new, will bring together not just the bodies uh, immediately there, like uh, Scottish Funding Council, Scottish Enterprise and so on, but will also uh, bring in Business Gateway a bit more. And as we went round and visited, we de did see quite a lot of different models from maybe what I had expected. For example, in Inverness, we visited a small business which hadn't had much input from Business Gateway, but actually had had good input from Highlands and Islands Enterprise. And by contrast, in Lanarkshire, eh, we met a much larger business which was actually eh, operating internationally, but because it didn't fall into a sector that eh, Scottish Enterprise would support, it was still being supported by Business Gateway despite its size, and it, they had obviously a very good relationship. Moving on to targets and performance, that was one of the things that Gordon Lindhurst eh, specifically talked about eh, in his opening remarks. Eh, so I'll not spend too much time on that, but the committee did find it difficult eh, to get information from the different council areas as to who was setting the targets, who was monitoring them. And it did appear to us that even the councillors eh, were not getting the information and knowing about the targets eh, that eh, they needed to, to properly monitor. So, eh, I mean, Andy Whiteman, I thought, made a lot of good points eh, in this regard, that, eh, of course, local councils are accountable. I don't think any of us in the committee eh, were questioning that. But the lack of data eh, to, to eh, really hold Business Gateway to account by local councillors concerned us. And I think the word alignment is a good one. We don't want Business Gateway to sub be subsumed in any way into national eh, things that we're doing, but we do want better alignment. Eh, in that regard, to Gordon MacDonald, uh, talked about the whole Irish model, uh, which I think is very interesting and very relevant. And I was also interested in the Minister's response to that, uh, saying that we can't cut and paste the Irish model directly onto Scotland, which I do agree with. The question is, is it local specialism or is it inconsistency? It's a national programme, but who is it accountable to? Some of these questions that we tried to look at. And I certainly agree very much with the committee recommendation that there is a scope for greater sharing and mainstreaming of best practice, eh, not just between Business Gateway and the outside, but within the different parts of Business Gateway. And for example, in Glasgow, there's an emphasis perhaps on growing businesses more than starting businesses, eh, which is interesting. Is it complexity or is it clutter? Eh, businesses do find eh, it difficult, I think Dean eh, Lockhart was mentioning this, eh, as to who to go to, and I think we very much picked that up as we met businesses. Some had immediately got a good relationship with the right body, but others toiled, eh, as I think Brian Whittle was saying, eh, to get that experience. But I suspect Brian Whittle's experience could have been very different in a different part of the country. I was interested in passing in his comment that eh, tax is a punishment in some way in businesses, eh, whereas obviously I would see tax as a contribution to good public services. And Colin Beattie mentioned eh, wanting seamless services, which obviously is what everybody eh, really is wanting. The, the whole idea of the drift away from the original remit, which I think eh, we kind of broadly accepted had happened, eh, the idea that eh, it had been set up, I think as Rhoda Grant said, it had been set up to be a one-stop shop, 
And I think that's certainly what most of us imagined, uh, even though it became apparent that that is not the case. And there are many ways into getting business support other than through Business Gateway. But perhaps the most telling point, again, from Andy Whiteman, that if this drift has happened, but there was no, really no strategic plan or review that uh, caused it to move in that direction. The enterprise culture, I think we've not really touched on too much today, um, but I think we have picked up both in this report, but also as the committee has done other work, that uh, many young entrepreneurs, it turns out when you speak to them, it was their parents, their families were also entrepreneurs, and they've picked that up from there. And the question I think we have as a society is how to get more young people, maybe like myself, whose parents were employed by big organizations, uh, to start up their own businesses. Uh, finally, on diversity, um, Angela Constance uh, majored quite a lot in that, uh, and I would very much agree uh, with what she said. Need to get more BME young people uh, into starting businesses, need to reach out to the underrepresented groups. And when we visited the Lanarkshire model, which is a contracted out one, uh, I was taken by the evidence they gave that once they got uh, a woman officer within Business Gateway to be giving advice, uh, a lot of women starting businesses really appreciated that uh, and were very, very positive uh, about it. So in conclusion, uh, may I thank all the witnesses who took part, and particularly the hosts, uh, who had us uh, visiting them. I think at one meeting we were out driving in the dark near Inverness uh, and couldn't find the place, uh, but the fo lo little local business patiently waited for us and gave us uh, lots of good information. We were in Lanarkshire, we were in Inverness and in Aberdeen, and I really benefited from all of these visits. Uh, may I also thank the Clarks uh, and Spice for all their input. I think we gave Business Gateway and business support more generally a fairly thorough inquiry. As others have said, we saw a lot of positives, but I think we agreed that we have not yet got the balance right between having a national service while supporting that it should be under local control and with local democratic accountability. Therefore, I'm happy to commend this report to Parliament. Thank you very much. That concludes the debate on the business support inquiry and it's now time to move on to the next item of business if you would change your seats accordingly.